Greetings. Let us study this brand new type of Pathfinder build. Master Surgeon Keystone is a very powerful addition to any build that uses a life flask. The effect of it will last for the full flask duration even if your life is full. Here the build is centered around this small change. The recovery it provides is a foundation of one of the most durable builds we've tested. It will be important to have this life flask of perenniality up at all times. You will have to drink it each time it's close to the end of its effect, and as it may sound discouraging, it's not that debilitating once you run a few maps. As a pathfinder it's possible to have other four flasks up permanently too. Select a replica sorrow of the divine flask for energy shield and eldritch battery. To make an additional use of energy shield you could equip Mahuexotl's machination shield for permanent plus 5% to all maximum resistances. This shield has some other extremely good defensive features. Mitigating tons of elemental and chaos damage is not enough, you need to take physical damage into account too. Equip the 4th Vow or Doppelganger guys and accumulate a lot of armor. Add to that endurance charges, chaos golem, and redirect physical damage to be taken as other types of damage. As you've selected Pathfinder, we recommend a poison build. There is no better skill to use than Forbidden Rite. It makes you deal chaos damage to yourself, but with 85 to 88% chaos resistance and superb recovery, it's nothing. Poison damage will be upgraded by Master Toxicist and Nature's Reprisal. We've added Frost Shield, Arctic Armor, Enfeeble Curse, Petrified Blood, Nature's Patience, and Progenesis Flask to further boost survivability. You will also take no lightning or cold damage. Most of the incoming hit damage will be taken as DOT, which you can rapidly recover. It's very tanky. Clear Speed is excellent with Master Toxicist and Azanus Gentle Touch. It has mediocre single target damage at around 10 million DPS, but it's good enough for most of the content. You can start with cheap items and progressively improve the build. Be sure you can afford Mahuexotl's Machination and 6 Link Body Armor. You can make great use of multiple unique items, but only some of them are mandatory. Mahuexotl's Machination is one of them, this shield will get you extra resistances. Anathema Ring and Azanus Gentle Touch are extremely good. For body armor, you can use Doppelganger guys, but the fourth vow seems like the best option if you have a lot of armor. A Pep's Rage is actually quite good. Use it until you can afford a better rare weapon, which will be undoubtedly much more expensive. The Mana Loss does nothing as you use ES to cast spells. Mahuexotl's Machination has a lot of keystones, it makes your energy shield useless, but if you manage to fill the ES pool at least once every 4 seconds, it grants 5% to all maximum resistances permanently. Half of elemental damage is taken as chaos, but that's good, as your chaos resistance is high. You can't regenerate or recharge life or ES, but you still can recover it with flask, which is a key to survival. With the fourth vow on, armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. It's important, as half of the elemental damage taken is actually chaos damage due to the divine flesh from the shield mentioned a second ago. It is basically responsible for half of your overall durability. Doppelganger guys, the 40% less physical and chaos damage taken while sane line is extremely impactful. Use it if you struggle with physical damage, it's as good as the fourth vow. Azanath's gentle touch gloves are our pick. It inflicts temporal chains on hit, saving you a socket, grants intelligence, maximum life, blinds most of the foes, and explodes enemies enhancing your clear speed. Ashes of the Stars is our choice too. It grants you the necessary attributes, up to 20% increased reservation efficiency, plus 1 to level, and 30% quality of all skill gems, all of it extremely good. Every poison build must be able to apply at least two curses. Three curses is even better, and Anathema Ring allows you to do so without whispers of doom. The 15% increased cast speed and up to 40 intelligence is also very desirable. Natural Affinity. As you're extremely durable already, standing still won't emaciate you in any way. After 5 seconds of doing so, you will take 10% less damage due to the grasping vines from nature's patience. Rakiata variant of Lethal Pride will get you the Tempered by War Keystone. 
With it, you will take no cold or lightning damage, it will all be taken as fire damage instead when combined with divine flesh. Half of that fire damage will be taken as chaos, and that's even better. The additional strength is a welcome addition. Gathering Wind's Keystone gained from Forbidden Flesh and Flame would improve your damage and mobility with Tailwind and Gale Force stacks. You're using Grace, Determination, and Malevolence. Maybe Purity of Fire instead of Grace. On a Watcher's Eye, pick Malevolence's Extra Dot Multiplier, or 10% of Physical Damage taken as Fire Damage from Purity of Fire. Other good mods are an increased recovery rate of life and energy shield while affected by malevolence, and up to 70% increased life recovery from flasks while affected by vitality. Use level 1 vitality if you want the latter. For damage, seek modifiers like increases to forbidden right gem level, chaos damage over time multiplier, increased DOT or poison damage, and ailment damage or ailment duration. Cast speed is important too, usually present on a weapon. For defenses seek armor, maximum life, fire and chaos resistances, physical damage taken as other types of damage, and spell suppression. With lethal prides tempered by war, no lightning or cold damage will be taken, you won't need these types of resistances. With purity of fire and ruby flask, you won't even need that much fire resistance on your gear. Energy shield is also not important at all. Other influential stats are Mana Reservation Efficiency from an Amulet, Jewels, or the Helmet, and Attributes, Strength and Intelligence. The Helmet is an extremely important piece. Here you will need to craft the mod that redirects physical damage to be taken as fire or cold and get some reservation efficiency, up to 20% as a reasonable assumption. It can be gained as an Essence's suffix and the Eater of Worlds implicit. Try to get a weapon that increases the gem level of Forbidden Right by 2. Add to that other various modifiers, mostly for chaos or poison damage over time. Keep boots simple. Get at least 25% increased movement speed, maximum life, armor, some fire and chaos resistance, and maybe even spell suppression or attributes. Gloves are straightforward as well. Focus on resistances, maximum life, maybe cast speed, armor, and suppression or attributes. The belt is yet another opportunity to acquire maximum life, fire, and chaos resistance. You should also get mods for increased flask charges gained, reduced flask charges used, flask effect, life flask recovery rate, or increased flask effect duration. The recovery rate mod may be the best one, but it also lowers life flask duration, so be careful with it. On the amulet try to increase your forbidden right skill level by 1 or 2. Get some maximum life and intelligence. Shaper's suffix for reservation efficiency for all skills, or other reservation efficiency suffixes for specific auras are recommended. Rings are excellent for gathering resistances and attributes from their suffixes, and maximum life from the prefix. Focus on chaos resistance as you will need a lot of it. You may also be interested in Despair Curse on hit as Hunter's suffix to save a socket. If you already have all the resistances, attributes, and enough mana for all the mana reserving spells, get damage with poison and flask effect duration from your regular jewels. A large cluster jewel with chaos related notables and 8 passives is what you're looking for. You don't really need touch of cruelty as you hinder with void sphere already. One or two medium cluster jewels will be needed. The most important is one spiked concoction notable which grants a permanent alchemist's genius for 20% increased flask charges gained, and 20% increased flask effect. Mender's Wellspring grants more life flask charges, peak vigor, maximum life, and brood for potency increased DOT and flask charges gained. All of these also increase life recovery from life flask. Born of Chaos Notable grants an extra 3% maximum chaos resistance resulting in 88% total chaos resistance. Enduring Composure is used for endurance charges that reduce physical damage taken. Both are extremely good, so you may want to use two small cluster jewels. Progenesis is the best flask for a build that has insane recovery, such as this one. It works quite similarly to Petrified Blood. It's expensive but worth its price. With Replica Sorrow of the Divine Flask, life recovery from flasks will apply to Energy Shield, 
which is a core feature of this build. Eldritch Battery will make you able to cast spells, as you have no mana, and your energy shield is useless for mitigating damage anyway. Add the reused at the end of this flask's effect, implicit with instilling orb. Divine Life Flask last much longer than the Eternal one, but you may want to switch them if you can sustain the Eternal Flask with no issues. The flask's suffix should increase the recovery rate by 70%, it will shorten duration, or grant 130% more recovery while on low life. The prefix shall get you the 40% of flask's recovery for the next 10 seconds. It will stack with multiple uses over the duration resulting in much more rapid recovery. Use a granite flask with increased armor and increased charges gained or reduced charges used. For your last flask, pick silver, basalt, quicksilver, or ruby flask with increased cast speed for a suffix. Quicksilver flask and ruby flasks are easy to keep on permanently as they consume fewer charges than the basalt and silver ones. Let's see the gems now. Forbidden Right has a great base spell chaos damage and can shotgun single targets with multiple projectiles. It will cause you to suffer a bit of chaos damage, but in this build it won't be a big deal. Use it to inflict poison. Link it with the basic poison support gems, deadly ailments, void manipulation, unbound ailments, spell echo, and greater multiple projectiles. Greater multiple projectiles is the only support gem in this setup that's better if it's not awakened. More projectiles results in a larger spread, thus it's harder to hit one target with all of them. Frost Shield grants you a bit of extra crit chance, which is actually good with careful conservationist notable, but the most important feature is the reduced damage taken, especially from enemies outside of the bubble. It drains your ES, but you have an excellent ES recovery. Get a divergent version if you can. Void Sphere hits enemies with high frequency to keep withered stacks from nature's reprisal, hinders them to increase your DPS, and pulls enemies so they're easier to hit. The Phantasmal one would be the best. Summon Chaos Golem for an additional physical damage reduction, and get an anomalous variant. Link them all with cast when damage taken. Keep all of these at level 20. Grace adds and increases evasion rating for a chance to avoid attacks. You may be tempted to replace it with level 21 Purity of Fire which is equally good, if not better. It's up to you to decide. Determination adds and increases armor to mitigate incoming physical damage. Use a divergent version if you can afford it. Malevolence increases skill effect duration, poison damage, and damage over time. It's very important for your DPS, but if you can't spare mana for it, link it with Divine Blessing support. The divergent variant is excellent here. Link them up with Enlightened support to reserve less mana. The skill tree alone won't get you enough poison chance. Use Divergent Herald of Agony for an additional 40% chance of poisoning. It should add up to 100%. It also grants more poison damage. Arctic Armor will make you take less physical and fire damage while stationary, making it an excellent addition. A Divergent variant is even better for the extra 1% less damage. Link these two with Enlightened Support as well. Dash. Use it to simply dash from place to place. You may want to replace it with Flame Dash, whichever you prefer. Molten Shell soaks up some of the incoming physical damage, the more armor you have the more efficient it is. Level 1 Life Tap support would be great here if you can spare a socket for it. It's optional, but the Life Tap buff grants you a bit of extra life recovery from flasks. With Petrified Blood, you prevent 40% of incoming hit damage, and then you take it as DOT over the next 4 seconds. This effect affects only the lower half of your life pool, but you're on low life constantly. The anomalous version is better. It prevents more hit damage but makes you take more damage over time instead, which is not a problem due to your high life recovery. With arrogant support linked to it, petrified blood reserves slightly over half of your life. It may sound bad but isn't due to the petrified blood itself. Anomalous type is preferable, it increases life reservation efficiency. In Feeble, Cursed Enemy deals less damage and has a reduced accuracy rating. In Feeble on hit, can be gained as a Corrupted Gloves implicit. It's good for survivability, but if you want more damage you might replace it with Punishment. Punishment makes Cursed Enemy receive increased damage if they're on low life. 
despair, cursed foes have reduced chaos resistance, which makes them take more poison damage. Anomalous despair is the best one as it specifically improves. Despair on hit can be gained as a rare ring affix. Temporal chains. This is the curse that makes poison last longer and reduces enemies' action speed. You won't have enough sockets for all of these curses so we've used Azanus Gentle Touch to apply the last one. All of the above mentioned curses can be applied automatically, so the whole setup may be redundant. If they are not, link them with cast when damage taken. If you have two free sockets left because you don't need them for curses, as we've mentioned, use haste as a temporary aura. It increases cast speed resulting in more damage. Link it with Divine Blessing support. Kill all the bandits in Act 2 for the extra passive skill points. For the Major God, we recommend the Solaris. It grants much needed additional physical damage reduction during boss fights and some other benefits. The soul of Rislitha may sound like a good minor god because of the 60% increased life recovery from flasks, and it definitely is great, that's a decent amount of extra recovery, but if you suffer from physical damage, pick Tukahama instead for the 9% physical damage reduction. On the passive skill tree, we've picked some reservation efficiency with aura effect, maximum life, and chaos and poison damage. Flask nodes are very important too. We've allocated five different clusters with life and utility flask nodes so that we can have them up constantly, even without trader keystone or a belt with various flask-related modifiers. Allocate Supreme Ego to turn it into Tempered by War later. Get the Life Mastery for extra 50 life, Chaos Mastery for plus 1 to level of all Chaos skills, or plus 1% to maximum Chaos resistance, Flask Mastery for one extra life flask charge every 3 seconds, and suppression mastery to make it lucky, only if you don't have 100% chance to suppress spell damage. For reservation mastery you can pick 8% increased damage per aura, plus 1% to maximum elemental resistances when your life and mana is reserved, or 10% increased effect of auras if you're using the purity of fire, pick 2. And that's the end of this guide. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.